In the middle of the Civil War, things were bad for the Union Army in a number of ways. Uh, they were going through a series of commanders, and Abraham Lincoln wrote a letter to a man he had just appointed as commander of the Army of the Potomac. And in that letter, he shows some extraordinary talent as a leader and exceptional confidence as a commander in chief. This is a letter dated January 26, 1863. It's written to General Joseph Hooker, who's just been announced as the replacement to General Ambrose Burnside who has held the position as commander of the Army of the Potomac, the main Union fighting force in the Eastern Theater of the Civil War, for just a handful of months. He himself, Burnside, had replaced uh, General George McClellan, who had been fired uh, in November of 1862. We're now just a few months later, and this is the third man being named to command the main fighting force of the Northern Armies, and the President of the United States has heard some bad news about what this general, General Joseph Hooker, has been telling reporters in Washington. Lincoln writes, General, I have placed you at the head of the Army of the Potomac. Of course I have done this upon what appear to me to be sufficient reasons, and yet I think it best for you to know that there are some things in regard to which I am not quite satisfied with you. This is Lincoln as a deft but also very blunt boss. I believe you to be a brave and skillful soldier, which of course I like. I also believe you do not mix politics with your profession, in which you are right. You have confidence in yourself, which is valuable, if not an indispensable quality. You are ambitious, Lincoln writes, which, within reasonable bounds, does good rather than harm. But then he adds, I think that during General Burnside's command of the army, you have taken counsel of your ambition, meaning that he listened too much to his ambition, and thwarted him as much as you could, in which you did a great wrong to the country, and to a most meritorious and honorable brother officer. General Burnside's short-lived command of the Army of the Potomac had provoked a lot of backbiting and internal feuding, and General Hooker was in the middle of that. Lincoln is trying to squelch that climate that he thinks is hurting his army, and yet he's promoting one of the men who had been stoking it for the last few months. So he's trying to address it. He also adds something that's even more ominous. Lincoln writes, I have heard in such a way as to believe it of your recently saying that both the army and the government needed a dictator of course, it was not for this, but in spite of it, that I've given you command. Now, this might be the most extraordinary thing of all. In the history of the United States, there's always been a clear demarcation between civil and military authority, a respect for civilian supremacy, especially for the role of the commander-in-chief. And yet, you can tell from this open admission by the president and commander-in-chief to one of his leading military generals, that clearly there were people openly talking about dictatorship in the United States in the middle of the Civil War. The crisis of the war had become so great that there were some advocating for an end to democratic Republican government. And there is a report that perhaps, Bur that perhaps Hooker was one of them. And yet here is Lincoln elevating him to command. Now this is where Lincoln also shows perhaps his own extraordinary self-confidence because he writes, only generals who gain successes can set up dictatorship. The government will support you. He says, what I now ask of you is this military success, and I will risk the dictatorship. Lincoln is so determined to push for military success that he almost makes a joke out of it in this brief exchange with Hooker. He says, the government will support you, which is neither more nor less than it's done for all of its commanders, and it will continue to support them. He says, I much fear the spirit with which you have aided to infuse into the army of criticizing their commander and withholding confidence from him will now turn upon you. Lincoln writes, I shall assist you as far as I can to put it down. Neither you nor Napoleon, invoking the great French commander, if he were alive again, could get any good out of an army while such a spirit prevails in it. In this sense, this is Lincoln giving advice. You achieved power in one way, now you have to discourage it in others. Lincoln says, and now beware of rashness. Again, offering advice. Beware of rashness, but with energy and sleepless vigilance, go forward and give us victories. It's one of the most extraordinary leadership documents in Lincoln's canon, where he offers advice, 
provides some warnings, offers a form of inspiration, and demonstrates his own extraordinary self-confidence in the face of what most people would consider a series of overwhelming and almost catastrophic portents of signs for the future.